Okay, let's have a look at the top 50 movies of 1993, numbers 50 to 26. First off, number 50, The Age of Innocence, Martha Scorsese's historical drama, which I went to the royal premiere of back when it was released in 93, hoping to see Winona Ryder, but the only person at the premiere from the film was Miriam Magouls, who wasn't part of the main cast, she played the old lady in the film. Anyway... Back to the list. Number 49, The Sandlot, or The Sandlot Kids, as it was called in the UK. Uh, about kids playing baseball. I'm uh, fighting off a big dog. And The Biggest Travesty, Hard Target, with John Claude Van Damme, John Woo film at number 48. How did that happen? So low down the charts when it was beaten by the Joy Luck Club, an Oliver Stone production based on the novel, but not a gunshot car chase or karate kick in place. Then this one does, though. The Bruce Lee story at number 46. Probably not 100% accurate, but damn fine film nonetheless, and good portrayal of Bruce Lee by... Uh, what's his name? Jason Scott Lee. No relation. Right. Mel Brooks comedy spoof uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights. Uh, was this the last big one he did based on Robin Hood films? Specifically Prince of Thieves. Then there we go. Sharon Stone in sexual thriller Sliver. But yeah, had a lot of problems when they made this. William Baldwin and Tom Berenger, they had to reshoot the ending because the test audience, I think, didn't get it or something. But yeah, it's not a patch on Basic Instinct. Number 43, Son-in-Law with Paulie Shaw. I'm a poet, etc. Number 42, Alive, about the uh, rugby team that tr got trapped in the Andes and had to eat the dead. Number 41, Carlitos Way with Pacino and Sean Penn. Brian De Palma film that actually... Might be a better film than Scarface, but... Uh, number 40, Hot Shots Part 2. Parodying mostly Rambo and action films. This is a good fun time. Then 39, What's Love Got To Do With It? Or Tina, What's Love Got To Do With It? As it was known in the UK, and that's why it took me ages to find, because I was looking in W, not T. But there we go. So... Great biopic. 38, Hocus Pocus from Disney. And that's pretty much on everyone's watch list at some point in October. Then number 37, The Piano. Where Anna Paquin won her Oscar at what, 11 or something? Really young. Then four, 36, Falling Down, Michael Douglas having a very bad day in an excellent film. 35, re release of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, probably in the Six re released, it's probably had by that time. And then 34, Disney again, they had a very good year. So, yeah, uh, Homeward Bound the Incredible Journey, which is a remake of the 60s film. But this one has, yeah, Robert Hayes, Kim Grice, Veronica Lauren, among others, doing the voices. Number 33, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. Uh, it's doing very well off the back of the second one, but it's not a good film. 32, The Beverly Hills Billies. The, uh, one of the films of following on from the Addams Family, because it was a TV show turned into a film that became quite popular at the time to do all those. 31, The Good Son with Macaulay Culkin being bad. 30, Made in America. This is... Uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Ted Danson in a weird comedy about uh, sperm donors. 29, Ma Malice, uh, Nicole Kidman and Alec Baldwin in a thriller. Uh, number 28, Adam's Family Values, which I've got the third one and the first one, but I don't have the second one for some reason. But it's probably the better one as well. But that's a great film. 27, technically Disney now. Uh, Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Touchstone Pictures. Great music. Great animation. 26. Here we go. The last one of the batch. Last action hero. 
It's uh, probably one of the first Arnie films not to make the top 10, especially the budget this one had. Directed by John Matiernan. There we go. Thank you for watching. Here runs the lesson.